He remarked to me about it last night that he had gone over the $100,000 mark again. Last week we saw him win in Lansing and he really didn't bowl that well. He shot a Dutch 200 and was fortunate to beat be Gil Slacker. I think it's going to be a different Mark Roth today. I don't know whether he's going to win, but the guy that's going to bowl him is going to have to bowl a big game to win. And he likes to be in that number one position where he only has to just roll one game to win the championship. This week it's for $13,000. He too, Mike, uh, he's just 30 years old and he's won over $700,000 already. Well, I tell you, if he keeps bowling until he's as old as I am, he probably won $2 million by that time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure he'll still be around because he loves this sport as they all do. So here's the stepladder finals. Boise Huber with a 214 average, 16 and 8 match play. Earl Anthony 215 average. He is the lowest match play at 15, 8 and 1. Neil Burton with a 214 average will face the winner of that one. Steve Cook averaging 221. Mark Roth is on top. His average is the leader at 222, a match play record of 18 and 6. The winner will get 13,7500 going to second place, and we'll come back for the handshake in the opening match on Boise oh. Huber, the veteran and not the rookie, but the guy's certainly looking for his first championship, Mike. Yes, yeah, so Boise's a very, um, what we might call a little bit of a fidgety bowler. He goes through a lot of little things dry in his hand and with his rosin bag before he gets ready. There's his statistics on the week. Averages for these five bowlers, very high. Boise Huber from St. Louis to the pocket, and there is a strike to open our first batch. Boy, sure couldn't have thrown it any better. Setting the stage here on lane 17 and 18, it seems like both the right and the left at the right-hand alley, lane 18, hooks more than the left one, and the players have told me the bowler that can master the right lane will probably be the winner today. Here's 43-year-old Earl Anthony from Dublin, California. Third last week, second two weeks ago, coming from the number four spot. There's that smooth Earl Anthony delivery, and the results, the 5-6. Well, that's caused from that deep inside angle I was talking about at the opening. Uh, he's playing near the fourth arrow. The ball doesn't want to drive through as much. Deflects. This is almost like a gimme spare. Earl makes it <laughs> almost, it seems like every time he leaves it. He qualified just 14th this week, worked his way up, and he does not get it. I think put the kiss of death on him, didn't he? He takes, made it when he bowled me. <laughs> takes care of the six. But not the five pin. Earl qualified 14th, went up to 8th after the first match play block, up to 7th. To be said, very, very close going into the position round. And Earl Anthony rose to the number four spot when he rolled a 232 in the position round. Came up from sixth place. Goes over to lane 17 on the opposite side, and there's that pocket hit. And a strike in frame two for Earl Anthony. And no 5-6 there. You get it up high enough, you get that five pin out of there. Boise Huber, when he rolled Anthony earlier in the week, beat him 276 to 210, and that was the highest game of the week for Boise Huber against the veteran Earl Anthony. Sure didn't show him any respect, did he? <laughs> Earl's bowled three games on this TV pair. Boise, 206, his average through two games, 203, 209. He's working on a strike, second frame, gonna have to come back, and he clears two, but leaves the two. And again, we watch the style of Boise Huber, very controlled. Now watch the follow-through as he comes through here. Watch what the arm does now. See the arm break there and the, go, the arm follow-through go left, and the ball doesn't quite make it up to the pocket, and he's very fortunate to get nine out of the hit. See, you know, what a lot of bowlers will do, Jim, is they'll, they'll think that the lane is not finishing when actually it was his follow-through that did that, and the next time he'll, he'll make an adjustment, he'll move a board or two right, make a good follow-through, and the ball will go high. So you can get confused. You have to execute properly and read those shots on good execution. First appearance in the championship finals in 1981 for Boise Huber. Saw him one time last year. Saw him last week as he altered it. This week, his number five. Working on a spare. And that shot is right there, but does not get the 10 pen out. He got the five, but not the 10. Six. Same type of shot as we saw before. Again, watch the follow-through. Short first step, short second step, very controlled swing. Watch the follow-through. Again, it goes left. As we see the ball, watch it deflect. It'll barely get the five and not the ten. One pin to the right, one pin to the left. He goes after the ten and his second consecutive spare. Takes care of it as a third frame. One thing I might say here, Jim, is when you're watching a player's follow-through, you should also watch it on the spares. Now, watch Boise's follow-through that time when the spare went straight through. He didn't try and help the ball back. Earl Anthony picked up the 5-10 split in that important position round match. And he can get even with the double here. 269. 
working for the strike, and there it is, two in a row for the veteran pro Earl Anthony. Earl is just so smooth. He's just uh, a pleasure to watch. I just in, he's one of the few bowlers I really enjoy watching bowl. They call him the doomsday stroking machine. Just has the same delivery, same follow through every shot. He's won 156,000 this year. 937,456. He wins first prize today. He will have reached $950,000 in his career. Can take the lead. Oh, what a nice shot. See it snap that seven pin out of there? So Earl Anthony would be in excellent position had he taken care of the 5-6. Still looks pretty good for the turkey. Back with a fourth from Boise Huber. His best finish in a PBA tournament. Some of our, some of our other finishers this week. In seventh place is young Dave Houston, improving Mark Williams, left-hander John Wilcox, Sam Zurich, the man with a powerful ball, Bob Hanley, steady Roy Buckley finished 12th, the great Johnny Petraglia, Joe Hutchinson making his sixth finals in a row, yours truly, Martin Letcher in 16th, Dennis Lane with his second straight final, steady Art Trask, Jay Robinson with four finals in a row, Hugh Miller, young Pete Weber, Daryl Bauer, stylist Tom Laskow, and finishing 24th, Rich Hartman. Jeff Ballinger, who was the alternate from Columbia, South Carolina, was the third leading qualifier. Stayed at third after the first match play block dropped to eight. He was in the running to make it and just barely did not. Boise Huber in the fourth frame, and he is right there at a strike in frame four. And his follow through went right straight up that time, Jim. It's just, uh, it seems like Boise has a nice shot if he executes properly. So Huber with a 59 in the third. He's on a spare in the or strike in the fourth. Earl Anthony's a 39 in the second. Three strikes in a row. Boise's trailing by 10 and could certainly use a double in this spot. He qualified just 20th of the week, by the way. Came up to ninth after the first match play block. Up to sixth and into fifth. And can catch her all with a strike right here. He's right there. Nice shot. Boy, we got a good match going here, Jim. We're getting that 10 pin tripped out of there in pretty good style. That one, uh, not quite the perfect shot as the last one, but very, very close. Just a fraction of the difference, but the same results. Again, very the controlled pit. style. Follow through straighter that time. Didn't help it as much. Watch the ball. Watch the six pin. Comes off that wall and gets the 10. Now, Earl Boise's, Anthony. Boise's put the pressure on Earl. Let's see how he responds here. Bowler of the decade in the 1970s, right there. Here it comes. Wow. Mm, five pin is up. Again, lane 18 is hooking more, so you have to give it more room. And it didn't want to quite make it back for Earl that time. He could have got the break off the wall, but he only left the five pin. Easy spare for him. Earl had the five six up in the first frame, did not convert it. Left the five. Now it goes after the five here. And Earl did a little practicing on that shot just to see what the ball reaction would be. 15th appearance in the championship finals out of 30 tournaments he has bowled this year. Isn't that amazing? That's phenomenal. It's just. I, Here's I the same guy that uh, told us a year ago, Mike, he would not be very much of a factor this year because he was going to cut down his turn for appearances. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he would have. Six frame for Earl, back on a spare for a strike on this lane, and he has hit it. And he's going to finish guy. on that lane, too. He's really nailing lane 17. Three strikes on that lane, one strike, an open, and a spare on the other one. Now we go to Boise Huber from St. Louis, 25 years old. Boise spends a lot of time now drying his hand. This is a very pivotal shot for him here. He's a pin ahead, can go 11 pins ahead with a strike, and he's on the tough lane. Highest he finished last year was fourth in Indiana. His shot comes in. Just follow it in, but you see the 10 pin remains. The weak 10. And again, Boise's follow through. He tried to help that ball just a little bit, and he didn't quite get the, the break of getting the 10 out off the wall. A spare here, and the match is dead even. Can't get much closer. Boise go very straight. It's very, he's a good spare shooter. He's an excellent young player. Going cross lane, taking care of the 10 pin. That's the second time that he left it, although he left it on a different lane. He's 108 spare, Earl Anthony's 108 strike, as we're through six frames. Boise had an 1830 round four series, and that was his best. And Goose, uh, <laughs> and Boise's asking Goose, uh, Harry Golden, our tournament director, he's affectionately known as Goose. 
Why do they call him Goose? Well, Mother Goose. You know, he's the uh, he uh, takes care of all the players out here, so he actually got that term of Goose. And he's asking for his one re-rack that he gets a game, and uh, he gets that without question. The next one, Harry Golden will have to look at. Boise Huber had a 2.02 in the position round. He got kind of lucky because the man he bowled, Neil Burton, had his low game of the week in 168. So Boise, who was fourth, dropped a fifth, but he did make the finals. And now he tries to get back on the string with a strike. He's right there. Oh, solid 10. Pretty shot, just bad break. Third 10, but he is up in this match. See, Boise came up there in two frames where he, he could have taken command of this match, and he made two pretty good shots, left a weak 10 and a solid 10, and now he's a pin behind and could be more behind it for Earl Doubles. Six years, $82,545 for Boise Huber. He's open so far, looking for his fourth spare to go with three strikes. Takes care of it, so he's knocked off the ten pin three times and the two pin back in the second. Earl Anthony, who has four out of five strikes, will come up in the bottom of the seventh. Uh, Dodger sure did a job in that World Series. He did indeed. I picked him to win, and nobody was with me. Here's Earl now in the seventh. Can take an 11 pin lead with he's a strike. He's on here. a strike. He's light. And again, having trouble getting that 5 out on lane 18. Breaks down the 5-10, leaving only the 10. And now a spare. We will have a 1-pin difference going into the 8. Earl won 5 of his last 7 matches. Very, very consistent this week. 17.97 in round 4, 17.11, 17.41 respectively. 2.15 average. There's the spare. And Earl has 128 spare, and Boise Huber a 127 spare with three frames left. And what we've got is a three-frame match here with Earl having a one-pin handicap. 128 bowlers this week, Bill Coleman and Mike Durbin, defending champs. Earl going to his good lane now. He needs to keep the pressure on Boise with a strike right here. Start getting down the 8th, ninth, and 10th, and every shot is just very, very important. In the eighth now. Earl puts it out and in, and there's the good kick for the seven and the strike in the eighth frame. You notice that too. Boy, that's three times in a row. He's just kicked that seven right out on that lane. The smooth style. Watch the long slide, the deep inside angle. And watch the four pin, second one from the left. Goes to the wall, comes right back and gets that seven. Here's Boise. Needs a strike to stay one down. It's a good shot. Perfect shot. That's not good. That is perfect. Beautiful shot of the eighth by Boise here. Well, I just I just watched how he let it go and how his follow through went. And he was so solid at the line. Boise really looks good. Isn't that the way you like to see him mowed down, Mike? It was just no doubt in the world that that was not going to be a strike. It was well, indeed. Actually, Jim, um, the solid hit does carry a lot on the tour, but. As we see the ball going into the pocket here, see no deflection at all. You'll see all ten pins go into the pit. But a lot of times bowlers, if they don't have to play the deep inside angle, like that light hit. Back to the ninth frame. Boise needs this one to set himself up for the tenth. He can take a ten pin lead. What a nice shot. Boy, he put the pressure right on Earl. That is the fifth strike in the match for Boise Huber. He is clean. All spares besides those five strikes. Follow through. See it straight up that time? Now watch the ball arc right here. It's starting to move toward the pocket. And again, all ten in the pit. And now Earl has to strike to stay one ahead. The great Earl Anthony. This is his tough lane. This is the key shot of the match right here for Earl Anthony. 43-year-old performer. And he think the greatest of all time. Ninth frame. He's high. I did it. He tried. That's the adjustment to get that five pin out. And he set it just a little bit short of his target. And we just get a side view, watch the slide, the long slide. From there, you can't tell any difference. But the ball hooked early on him, right through the nose, and he paid the full price. So Earl does not convert the 4 6 10. He is open twice, both times on the same lane. And now he goes over, and he is not in a very good position, sitting at 176 open with Boise Huber, a 147 double. And he's in the position now, the unenviable position of having to strike out to force Boise to mark. And there's Susie. She's been through this many, many times before. 
a must for Earl, and there's Gets that seven out again. Yeah, that's seven. He has strikes all the way across on lane 17, but he's had difficulty on the other one. Well, again, we said that the person that could master lane 18 would be the effective bowler today. Earl's still in the match if he can double here. Needs to strike out for a 206. High. High again. Just didn't take any time or concentration on that shot at all. It really surprised me. That's the baby split. The 2-7. Now Boise just needs to show up for the 10th frame and stay behind the foul line. He'll be a winner. Neil Burton is his next opponent coming from the number three position. There's the one up. And a 195 for Earl Anthony. He was sitting at a 148 strike to eight and then had difficulty in the ninth and tenth. And Boise Huber. Oh, and if Earl would have struck out, he could have been a winner. <laughs> At 18, the 10 Boise is going to shoot in the two O's. Earl has got everything wrapped up and ready to take off. Boise. It just, it just shows you you can never give up in this game. If, uh, if he'd have struck out, he would have been a winner. Just waiting for this shot, and then Earl Anthony will depart. There's the nine pin up. Now Boise Hubert, who takes care of the ten, and he is a winner of the opening match. Earl Anthony is departing from the Most third. common pitfalls in bowler's arm swings. The first of these is where the bowler's arm swing gets away from his body, called a swing out. And the second is the converse where it goes behind his back in the backswing. The cause for both of these errors is generally a lack of a free swing in the bowler's arm swing. A free swing tends to swing straighter than one does that's controlled by muscle. Well, let's suppose that my swing gets away from my body in the backswing. How in the world do I correct it? Well, the first correction is for me to try and develop as free a swing as possible. I hold the ball comfortably, my hand is loose, and when I push away and let it swing, I let the weight of the ball control the swing rather than my muscle. This should correct the problem. However, if it doesn't, if it's still a little bit away in the backswing, well, as I push the ball away, push it gently to the right, and hopefully this will straighten it out in the backswing. Well, how about the swing that goes behind the back? What do I do to correct it? Well, again, I try my level best to develop a free arm swing. And again, this should correct it. But if it doesn't, in my push away, push gently left or toward the center of the body and it should straighten it out in the backswing. These are just two of the most common errors in bowler's arm swing. There are others. Remember, the free swing is the best remedy for a straight arm swing. We'll be right back with more bowling after this. Neil Burton and Boise Hubert. I said uh, it's not Richard, it also is not Nelson. Neil is a 35-year-old performer, been on the tours for the ACNC age of 31, looking for his first championship. But before we get to him, take another look at Boise Hubert. And Neil's going to make Boise finish on that right lane again. And again, a little lapse in concentration there. And he set the ball what we call short. In other words, he did not get it out to his target. His target probably about uh, the 13th, 14th board in there. And he probably got it in around the third arrow. Ball hooked high, left the 310. These guys have met twice this week, including the position round. We'll give you the results in a second as Boise Hubert tries to convert the 310. It just goes by the three pin. A lot of times the bowlers don't practice spares enough ahead of time and uh, can be very important. We see him shooting the 310 from the extreme left over about the middle arrow, maybe even left of the middle arrow, and the ball slides by the three pin, doesn't grip, just missed it, not much. And we see Neil playing outside here, leaving the weak 10. All of a sudden, Mike, as the bowlers were sailing along so great at the opening match that we have had some opens. First, Earl Anthony leaves a 4-6-10, and then the 2-7. Boise Huber, the 8-10, and he misses 3-10. Neil Burton comes back out, tries to take care of it, open the first frame here, and well, take an early lead. Well, Jim, there's a reason why the scores stay low. Yeah, if you don't get open, you, with the way these guys can strike out here, you're going to have high scores. Those opens have a tendency to bring your average down and lower the scores some. Neil Burton defeated Boise Hubert 211-203. Then in the position round, Neil's lowest score of the week, and Boise Hubert beat him 202-168. Neil was really kind of locked into that number three position. He was 198 pins from second and 142 pins from fourth. 
going into the position, Ron. And again, Neil wears a tennis shoe on his right foot here to get traction so that he won't slip. Too high, and he's got the three tag. Well, let's see if he went to school on Boise's shot. We get a view from the behind here, the tennis shoe on the right foot, the straight swing of Neil Burton and the follow through straight up there, but the ball hooked early, must have been just a little left of his target, leaving the 310. And he'll move cross lane shooting from the left the same way Boise did. Lane 17 continues to be the trouble lane. And he's got it. Nice shot. He did go to school. That's the perfect way to shoot the shot. Put it right down between the two pins. Both the three and the ten will fit in there just perfectly. And again, this is the way to make that spare. The ball hits the three and deflects into the ten. Boise now in the second frame, trailing by nine. Six, 300 games in his very young career. That's pretty good. And he throws it out. He doesn't come back. And suddenly he's fishing just a little bit where he was throwing almost every ball in the pocket in the first match. I don't know whether that 8-10 unnerved him a little bit or what it is. Sometimes that's like a, a fastball pitcher throwing his best pitch in there and a the guy hits it out of the park. He's a little reluctant to throw his best pitch again. <laughs> This is a very choppable split. A spare. See how far from the left he shoots that? He almost set that ball down on the left gutter. That ball had hit on the fourth or fifth board on the left side, going cross to avoid the possibility of a chop. Started bowling, this youngster, at the age of 13. By the time he was 18, he was averaging 217 in high school. Boise Hubert. Amazing. He's a six year veteran, and he's only 25. I didn't start the tour until I was 25. Looking for his first strike of the match on a double lane. And, and look he gets at a that. horrible break, the 4 9. The ball hit just a little tight. It drives through, chops the 5 straight off that 9. We'll get a view of it here. Watch his follow through. Straight up. In fact, it went a little bit to the right. The ball's going to finish hard here. Watch the ball go through and chop that 5 straight off the 9, and the 2 pin doesn't get the 4. It's one of the worst breaks you can get bowling. He's got to move. He's got to go for the split. I mean, he'd be way behind in the match. He's got to hit the four pin on the left side so thin it'll slide it into the nine. He and he gave it a, a shot. Yeah, hey, that's a, a, a spare in the third frame for Boise Huber and the crowd reacts. You need something to get a little life in this crowd here, Jim. <laughs> this is a classic on how to make it. He moved way to the right, cross lane. It's biting the lane. He's aiming about a quarter of an inch. And he hits that quarter of an inch from 60 feet away. Got a little extra to spare because he slid it by in front. And there's the strike. Neil Burton comes back to get it. And, Jim, that was the identical hit that Neil had in the first frame. But this frame, he got a little bit more lift on the ball. The fingers were in the ball. And the ball had a little better roll and slapped that 8-10 right out of there. So Neil's on two spares and a strike. He's from St. Louis also to a couple of St. Louisans doing battle here in Fairview Park, Ohio. I'm sure they must have bowled each other many times before. Neil qualified seventh, stayed seventh after the first match play block. Went up to third. 1980 Masters champion. You saw that Masters tournament on ESPN. He is light. Two, four, five. And there's the correction for the 310. He's really fishing on that left lane. Left the 10. There's, There's his wife, Pat. Neil Jr. is roaming around, but he is just one year old, so he's not allowed to be in front row. Well, in fact, my daughter, Christine, is babysitting for him right now. <laughs> he wins 13000 Maybe she'll get a pretty good tip out of it. There's a shot from the spare. So Neil Burton is open. Boys of Ubers had the difficulty, but he took care of the 4-9. Joining us up here is the commissioner of the PBA, Joe Antonor. We'll visit with Joe in a second. Right now, Boise Huber is on a spare. 11 pins down. Ball sliding by again and fights at the back end to get that five. So there's a strike in the fourth frame. That means he has 11 pins down, 47 strike, 58 spare, but he is on a strike. Right now. Again, watch his follow through here. Pretty straight out. Now watch the ball is sliding. Now it'll bite right around here and watch the ball get the five. Just enough. And the pins all do their job right. and crunch them in. There's the 47 strike for Huber, 58 spare for Burton. So a strike here for Boise. And this is a one-pin difference. 
Billy Waylou years ago used to be the TV color man used to say hit him thin and watch him spin. So Boise Huber, big strike in the fifth frame is what he's seeking. This is the lane that he took care of the 4-9 on the previous time. There's oh, the what a nice shot. And he that hits it again. Hit half pocket and just snapped that 10 pin out of there like it wasn't even there. Let us welcome this gentleman, Mike, Joe Antonor, nine years a commissioner of the PBA. And uh, interesting match, Joe. In the first one, it was so very, very close. Everybody was uh, doing a good job, and all of a sudden, they crumbled in the tent. They're fighting it out out there. Very good match, as you said. And this one's shaping up. Very well. There's a strike for Neil Burton as he keeps pace in the fifth frame. He is looking at a 78 strike. Boise Huber working on a double. We watch the style of Neil Burton here. See that tennis shoe, the high backswing, long slide. See the back come up for good leverage. Now watch the ball as it hits the pins here. Very little deflection and that six snap that 10 right out of there. Going to his difficult lane here. See there we see his shoes, the regular bowling shoe on the left foot and the tennis shoe on the right foot for traction. It's a good pair, Mike. You can't hardly tell the difference from that angle. These two guys continue to strike, and uh, Joe Antonora, he, we talked about 13000 Mike and I have, first prize. Uh, how do you compare the purses and the, the tour in general, say, far from now, from about five years ago? Well, Jim, we have a big one coming up in 82. We'll bowl for over $2 million in 16 winter tournaments. That average per tournament is about double just 10 years ago. Here's Boise coming back, and oh, they both found the groove. A three-bagger for Boise Huber, two-bagger for Neil Burton, and the difference, Mike, is just one, one pin, pin through six frames, and both are on at least two strikes in a row. And Boise can take the lead with a, for the first time in the match with a strike right here on lane 17, which is his best lane. How's the PBA membership growing, Joe? It's continuing to grow, Jim. We'll have 2,500 members by the end of this year. And where was that 10 years ago? About 1,100. Well, that's even better than doubled. This. Oh, look at that. Four strikes in a row for Boise Huber, and now Neil Burton comes up in the seventh, and he's got a strike to keep pace. So really, we're looking at a nine-pin deficit, this guy here, Neil Burton. Moves way to the left to shoot the 6-10 here. Throw hard and straight at it, try and hit both pins with the ball, and he did it. Perfect. So through seven, Neil Burton is at a 126 spare. Boise Huber, a 107 on two strikes. Joe, uh, of course, ESPN has carried uh, the telecast of the Summer and Fall Tour for the last two years, and ABC, of course, for many years, has done your winner at the Spring Tour. I guess the last couple of years you've had them all on TV, haven't you? They have, Jim, and uh, we're looking forward to it again next year. The impact of TV certainly has helped you. There's no question about it, the $2 million I was referring to. Uh, we only have uh, 800 people in our state. <laughs> Just a beautiful shot by Neil there. 146 strike now. These guys have really picked up the pace that uh, Huber and Anthony were going at through the first eight and a half frames of the opening match. And Boise now is working on four strikes in a row. Here's the guy that opened with a 310, did not convert it in the first, and took care of the 245 in the second, then got the 4-9 in the third, and that just propelled him, and you could see picking up the confidence in the eighth now. Strike here puts him 21 ahead. It's right there. And snaps that 10 pin out of there again. He was a little unsure about that, but he kind of stood and watched it to see what would happen. Now watch the ball as it hits the pins this time, Jim. It will deflect slightly to the right. But it still has enough to get both the eight and the 10. They were the last two down there. 21 ahead can make it 31 with a strike here. Really put Neil Burton's back to the wall with a strike right here. We're at... Fairview Park, Ohio, $100,000 tournament. I'm Jim Roberts, Mike Durbin, PBA Commissioner Joe Antonora is with us for the ninth frame of a most interesting match. Boise Huber goes Brooklyn and leaves two. And the adrenaline that time worked against him. He just got a little over anxious, rushed the line, and his follow through shot to the right, which meant that he set the ball way left of his target, went all the way over to the Brooklyn. That is the first frame since the third when he did not get a strike. 
And he has a very choppable spare here. The 5-9 is not an easy spare. Again, it's that left lane that has given him the difficulty. As everybody in this tournament so far. And he did chop it. I hate out. to be a prophet on that. Boise Huber is open in the ninth. And that just leaves it open for Neil Burton, who has a 146 in the seventh, but a strike in the eighth. And we see the ball hooking right there, biting the lane. And here's what is meant by a chop. You just take that pin clean off. And Neil Burton can take the, take the lead with the strike here. He's seven pins down. He can go three pins up with the strike right here. And he's right there. Oh, just a little light. A little got wiggle of the eight pin, but not quite enough. Here we see a great shot of the ball coming in very light in the pocket. Now watch the head pin. It will go to the wall. He barely gets the head pin. It goes to the wall. Now watch it come back. And it almost knocks out the two, four, five, eight. Only the eight stands. That is known as a bucket crumbler. <laughs> And he takes care of the spare, so Neil Burton, a spare in the ninth, as his lovely wife looks on. And she's trying to figure out the score right now, and I can tell her that he's seven pins down, needs a double in the tenth frame to force Boise to double. So, uh, Joe Antonor, you're still with us. The match is so exciting. We've been sitting back for a second, taking a look at everything as they go into the tenth frame. And I guess uh, everything's in pretty good shape then. Yes, it is. While we were talking about the big money, I thought I'd get Mike to help me work on my game, but after watching this, I think I'll leave it to them. <laughs> How is your game, by the way? Only average. <laughs> average of the PBA standards or average in our average bowler average, standards? Average, average. <laughs> and Neil just dug himself a hole right there, going high, leaving the 3-6. Needs to make the spare to force Boise to mark in the 10th frame. He's nine pins down if he makes the spare. Boise Looked like he wanted to give it to him, but Neil wasn't taking it at this point, at least. Had his chance. He did indeed. It's one of those things, Mike, where if you can get the strikes put together, as Huber did, the fourth through the eighth frames, he can be open twice. But it really mounts up. Neil Burton, on the other hand, just has one double, fifth in the sixth, and only four strikes in the match. Joe, uh, what do you think of the level of the professional athletes go? How does that compare to bowlers? Are they up on the par with, say, the football players and the baseball players and all of that with conditioning in the athletic terms? I think in certain areas, Jim, obviously there are uh, track men would have different uh, qualities, but these men need great legs, uh, stamina, strength. So I think in their own way they are. And that 8-10 for Neil Burton finishes him off with a 2-0-2. And all boys of Uber has to do is get a nine in two balls to tie. Right, Mark but he, will does, win it. he does need a, a spare or a strike to be a winner here, and he knows it. He went over and checked the score with our tournament director, Harry Golden. He knows exactly what he needs. Steve Cook, the big guy at the number two position, and Mark Roth, number one. They'll be coming up next. There's and the he breaks out the 5-7. And boys of Uber is the winner of his second back. Practice time, Mike. He can throw one or two here. Well, boys, he will do a little practicing on this second shot in the tenth. Just stay behind the line. He's a winner. And naturally, he throws a perfect shot then. <laughs> so he's open in the first. He's open in the ninth. Nearly open in the third. Neil is hanging around till the match is over. And that's his pretty wife, Pat. He will finish fourth and earn 4,500. Earl Anthony, who was defeated by eight pins in the previous match, finished fifth and $4,000. And what can you say, Joe, about the fabulous career enjoyed by Earl Anthony? <laughs> so that takes care of the match. And this match is over. We thank Joe Antonora very much for his comments. Mike Durbin and I will be back, and Big Steve Cook will move into the picture to face this little guy. We'll come back to Ohio in a moment. Rather than moving his feet to the left, this is called speed control. Well, how do these bowlers learn this delicate art of speed control? Well, the first thing to realize, it is, it is a very dif difficult task to accomplish, and it is a delicate art. I've been bowling for over 30 years, and only recently have I mastered to at least a little bit of degree this art of speed control. I think I made the mistake that a lot of players make 
over a period of years. I tried to speed up my approach when I wanted to throw harder and slow my approach down when I wanted to throw slower. And the problem with this is it's, it's difficult to maintain your timing. It's so easy to get out of whack or out of sync with your timing doing this. I think I found a far better method of doing it. And that's mainly to keep the same approach speed, but to vary the speed of my follow through. Let me demonstrate. I'm a right-handed bowler now. I'm into my next to the last step, taking four steps. And if you're left-handed again, you just turn this around. And my arm is right at the peak of the backswing. I've walked up to the line in my normal approach speed, but I want to throw the ball harder. So what do I do? Here I am. Well, it starts to come down. I don't help it. I let gravity just bring it down. And it gets right about here, even with my right leg. And at this point, I consciously think of whipping through the follow through very firm and hard. This increases my ball speed, helps the ball hold into the pocket better, and adjust to hooking lanes. Now, on the opposite thing, let's suppose that I want to slow this ball speed down a little bit. Again, I take my normal approach speed. I don't slow everything down. I get right to the next to the last step here. I'm starting my slide. I get to this point here, and I consciously ease up going through. Now, I don't open my hand or anything. I still lift the ball so that I get good fingers on the ball in an arc. And what hopefully will happen is the ball will hook a little bit more on some of the slick lanes and be able to make that adjustment. Ball speed, speed control is a very difficult adjustment. It's a delicate art, but if you can master it, it can add many, many pins to your average. We'll be right back with more bowling. And now he's got to take the big guy, Steve Cook, our champion two weeks ago in Indianapolis. I'm just looking at the uh, the bios here, and I, I see Boise 5'6", 145 pounds, and Steve Cook 6'6", 259. It just makes me chuckle, you know. Steve, just, Steve says that's a bit of an underestimate. He is uh, about... 265, ranging up to 280. He goes for the first shot. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> wow. What a ball. A strike for Steve Cook. Boise Huber beat him one time earlier, however, as he took care of him earlier in the week. Boise Huber, 236. Steve Cook, 192. Boise's taking care of... Well, in this Early sport, it just isn't how big you are. You know, it's how many pins you can knock down. Steve Cook averaging 228 on the TV pair. There's a nice shot. I wonder if there is somewhat of an somewhat of an intimidation factor here. I I don't know. You wonder, you're pulling somebody that big, and they come out and they throw that first ball, and it looks like it could have knocked down 50 pins, let alone 10, and your first shot goes right through the nose. It's just... Uh, 3-6 is what he is looking at, and 3-6 is what he is no longer looking at. Spare in the first frame for Boise Huber. Boise going back to his rosin, fiddling with that, and then he holds his hand over the hairdryer, picks up his towel, wipes his face off. Boise wants to make sure he does everything just right and that everything is just so before he throws the ball. And I know the feeling I'm the same type of bowler. Huber looking for his first national championship. He's won a couple of regionals, however. Finished fourth a couple of times on the national tour. And there's a shot. And again, Good. a nice shot. Just snapping that 10 pin out of there. So Huber takes care of the 3-6 in the opening frame and then gets the strike in frame two. Steve it, Cook. Interestingly enough, Steve Cook tore off a piece of tape, and he didn't put it on the ball. It's now actually resting on the ball return there. Small strip of, of white tape. It'll be interesting to see if he picks it up and puts it in the ball later on. Cook from Roseville, California. He's 24 years old, finished 29th last week after his championship. There's the tape. And there's the piece of tape I was talking about. It'll be interesting to see if he picks it up and puts it in the thumb hole. Second frame. This is the lane that's giving everybody trouble. Oh, what a super shot. That was just too good. That's why it left the six. It hit so hard that the three pin just flew over that six pin. So a spare here, and the match will be even through two, but Huber will be a strike up. Cook got a 277 in the final round, then finished off with a 179 and a 210 and lost both of them. Won his first six matches of match play in round four, an 18-11 block. That's outstanding. And he has to be just brimming with confidence. You know, he, he won just two weeks ago. Oh, and they all, they went that confidence right down the tubes on an air. And this is just carelessness. Maybe he did not practice spares on the right side of the lane, thinking the ball would be tight going across, and it just hooks right by it. Just barely missed it, but in a one-game match, that's just giving pins away. 
He was second going into the position round, seven pins from the lead, but Mark Roth defeated him and took the number one spot. Got a 210 of that position round. He was open in the eighth frame. Now, he needs to forget that. You see him shake his head just then, Jim. He kind of just shook it. He's still thinking about that spare that he missed. He's got to forget it and start over. He got a strike on this lane in the first frame. And he did not get the seven pin. Boy, he's made, come out and made three super shots, and, uh, and he's shooting 180 right now. You heard a little round of applause. The people on the far side, the left side over there, could not see that the seven pin was up. He's switching balls here, changing balls to shoot at the spare. Seven pin gives Steve a lot of trouble a lot of times. I know I've seen him miss it many times during uh, qualifying and match play, maybe not this week, but in other weeks. When he won at Indianapolis two weeks ago, he defeated Earl Anthony by 50 pins in the championship. Very hard. See how hard he threw on this pair? <laughs> so he's got the spare in the third frame. Boise Huber working on spare strike as he comes to the right side lane, number 18. Trying to get a little sip of water before he goes. We are in Fairview Park, Ohio. $13,000 first prize on our fall PBA tour. I'm Jim Roberts with Mike Durbin, the defending champ who shot a 300 this week. I think Boise thinks it's a commercial. <laughs> I think he thought we were away to a commercial. <laughs> Boise qualified fourth, qualified just 20th, and then worked his way up to number five. Was the alternate last week, so he has a bit of a hot hand. He's rolled 203 and 220 in his first two matches. He can take a 12-pin or a 22-pin lead with a strike here. Not going to get it. Nope, light again. 2-5. Didn't get the lift. See him look at his hand coming back there. That meant that he, he didn't quite get the lift that he wanted. And it was the 3-6 in the first frame, the 2-5 here. It's a muscled game. And just doesn't quite get the lift he wanted. The ball continues to slide, starts to bite now way too late. Breaks it down for only the 2-5. Cross lane at it. Wow, still almost chopped it, even for that extreme left-hand angle. So through three, he has a 12-pin advantage. There's Joe Antonara, the gentleman we were visiting with, nine years at the helm of the PBA. Of course, does a very, very fine job. We have a chance to visit with him from time to time. And we just finished having our executive board meeting that we had uh, a few days ago, and he presides over. Boise to the pocket light. And breaks down the 4-5, leaving only the 5-pin. But what he's done is he's kept Steve Cook in the match. Two strikes there would have really put the heat on Mr. Cook. But right now, Steve is still in the match. Boise Huber is a coin collector. He has over 400 of them. His prize position is an 1844 half dollar in excellent condition. And he'd like to add to his collection a few coins. From this tournament, maybe instead of paying him by check, $13,000 is what he's looking for. Steve Cook now, the winner of this one, facing Mark, Mark Roth, all the championship. Cook, on this lane in the second frame, Mike, did not get the six pin out. Yeah, with either ball. Yes, with either ball. He qualified fourth, went up to second after the first match play block, stayed there for the rest of the tournament. He's on a spare. He laid the ball what we call a little bit short, and the right lane again is hooking more than the left. Wouldn't hold the pocket, paid the full price with the 4-6. Watch how hard he'll fire at this spare, hoping to bounce one of those pins out of there. He's going to shoot at the 4, and he will zing it. But he doesn't get the bounce out. It's very difficult to do. And he's digging himself a hole. He has but 55 through 4 frames. Here's the guy two weeks ago, 234 against Earl Anthony. He won the Tournament of Champions starting the match with 10 straight strikes. He won on ESPN in Fresno when he opened with eight straight strikes. And this time he is open with just one strike. And there's the difference. But Boise, just one strike as well. well but Boise's no opens. made the spares, right? Cook left the seven pin on this lane last frame. The last frame he was on the lane. And almost left another split. He's coming up a little bit high, leaving only the 6'10", and he, it seems like that missed spare seemed to unnerve him, and he hasn't gotten his composure back together yet. 
You mentioned when he came out of the opening frame, he put the 10 in the pitch. It's a perfect hit, then ran by the six, and as you say, it just hasn't been the same performer since. He averaged for the week 221, 17 and 7 match play record. He's had a very good week, and he's had a hot hand, and there's the spare. And he Even almost missed break. that one. That one he made on the right, going away. Mike Durbin, by the way, when he won the tournament last year, rolled an 861. You came from the fifth spot. You had to win four matches to win the championship, as Boise Huber is trying to do here. Maybe Cleveland's the city that that happens in, huh? You averaged 215 for all the four games. Boise right now is averaging 211.5. And well, this is a match of here you take it. No, I don't want it. He leaves the 6-7. And I think Boise will definitely go after this split. He made the 4-9 earlier. I think he's going to go give this a shot. What's happened to these lanes, Mike? The uh, the scores have been so very high and throughout the week. And Anthony and Huber started out so very good. The first eight and a half frames of the first game. And all of a sudden, trouble for one or two. Well, it, he almost makes it. It's a, it's a combination of a couple things. The lights do affect the lanes as we're bowling, Jim. The lanes tend to dry up, and they start to do what the bowlers call hook early. In other words, they're hooking a little bit sooner, but not as much at the back end. So it makes the area that we're aiming at out there smaller, and it makes the carry factor at the pins uh, more difficult. And right now, the bowlers are having trouble hitting the 1-3 and the 1-2 pockets, respectively. Boys of Huber's won $16,082 so far. Last year, he only won a little better than $13,000. Long way to go in this match, and another match yet to come, and there's a 10-pin. We have just seen two strikes, Cook in the first frame, Huber in the second frame, in this match. Watch the follow-through. We'll see if it's him or the lane. The follow-through is good. It's just the lane's not quite biting. The ball deflects and almost leaves the 8-10. The 8 was the last one out of there. There's the spare in the sixth for Boise Huber. And it's only an 11-pin match. That open in the fifth frame by Boise has kept Steve Cook in the match and may have given him new life. The last perfect game of those three was two weeks ago in Indianapolis. He was 29th in 1979 in this tournament. Did not bowl here last year. 29th last week. And he can do no worse than third in this tournament. Last time he struck was the first frame. We are in the sixth. Gives that one more room here. And gets the mixer. See the difference between the way his ball hit the pins and the way Earl's did. He has much more power on the ball, and he got those pins bouncing off the wall to get it out. See that cupped wrist at the top? Tremendous turn and lift. You could see his fingers lift around that ball. Now watch the head pin go to the wall. The ball will deflect. It does deflect. Comes back and bounces around and gets that 5, 6, 10. Even with all that power, and he's throwing the 16-pound ball, I think, from that fourth arrow, <laughs> those pins still will deflect that ball. He has 11 pins down. However, a strike here, and it's just one. And it's just one little pin. Take a little more time here. This is the lane that he struck on in the first frame. Got a spare in the third, spare in the fifth. He's on the left lane. And it's high. Brook, very poor shot. He took a little extra time. He just got too careful with that shot and really turned the ball very early. He is not pleased with that shot at See, all. See, he's just careful with the whole shot. Now watch it at the top of the swing. See, he's behind the ball here now, and he starts turning way early here, and the ball's right of his target. It's right of the fourth arrow. He's aiming a little bit left of that fourth arrow, and it's all the way in the over. Almost a runaway, bro. Makes the spare. The reaction as he takes care of the spare, so he is not happy, but the match is far from Mark over. Mark Ohio, Mike, you're, this is your territory. You're not, you don't live very far from this. About 45 center. minutes, Jim, about 45 minutes. I, this is the west side of town, and I live over on the east side. You live in the Chagrin Falls, right? And Boise has to be encouraged just a little bit, watching Steve throw that shot. He knows that he didn't throw it with any confidence, and sometimes that'll perk a bowler up, and he'll start throwing the ball better. Boise has not struck it since the second frame. He's light again, and gets the wall shot. He's pleased with that one. He knows he didn't quite get the lift on it that he wanted to, and still gets the strike. So he maintains the 11-pin lead. However, he is a strike up, so he's helped by it. 
And again, he doesn't quite get the fingers in this that he wants. The follow-through goes to the left. That means the ball will not make it up quite as much. Watch the head pin. The ball deflects here. See, the head pin goes to the left and gets the 4-5-7. Against a better pin, Jim, that would have been a split. No titles as yet for this young man. Highest finish is fourth. There's an 11 pin lead and the strike up. If it was the other way, we would have a closer match. Can make it 21 with a strike here. Indeed, he drills it right at the pin and the six pin is up. And again, his follow through that time shot through in a big hurry. He turned the ball early and the follow through went to the right. He's just not, neither one of them are making very good shots right now. Now it puts Cook in the position to get a strike. Keep it at 11 two strikes and have a chance to cut it down again. They just seesaw back and forth. In their defense, again, th what they're aiming at out there is not very much. And there is a lot of pressure. The winner of this game does get the ball for the title. And uh, so far, the, the lane is, is mastering them rather than the other way around. Steve is on a spare. He left the five pin in the sixth frame on this lane. He struck, but he was open in this lane in both the second and the fourth. And this is the lane he picked to finish on. He's it in the eighth frame, looking for a strike. Taking a lot of time. A double is what the doctor ordered for him. Well, you have to take him one at a time, though, Jim. There's the Change shot. balls. He changed balls. This ball comes less, and he... Is he going to get it? He is not. No. It's off the spot, but it will be put back, and he leaves the ten. So he loses one more pin and is down by 12 now. Changes his blue ball. Maybe he figures that'll go better with his green shirt. But anyway, it's high. And it looks like it's going to fall, but it doesn't quite do it. This blue one probably is a harder ball. It hooks less. The lanes must be breaking down quite a bit. Oh, that lane. Lane 10. Takes care of it. Remember back in the second frame on this lane when he left the six pin, and it's now 12 pin difference with two frames left. Right He's now, in. Steve is shooting a 174, and his best potential is 194. And Boise Huber is going along at a 186 clip right now, but he can strike out for 206. No contest in the Tournament of Champions. Steve Cook defeated Pete Couture, who is next week's defending champion in Syracuse, 287 to 183, beating by better than 100 pins. Ten strikes in a row to start. When Mark Roth has to be sitting over in the wings just licking his chops, figuring that uh, they bowl like this, he can handle either one of these guys. This is a most important frame for the hook and does not get it. And again, the ball hooked early on him. Evidently, the, the lanes, the lights may have dried the lanes out considerably, leaving the 4-7, breaking up the split. If he makes the spare, he's 14 pins in the hole, and he has to hope that Boise opens to have any chance in this match. The strikes have not been easy to come back, friends, in this match. Cook, two, and Huber, two. Boise's back there putting his thumb in that rosin bag and his fingers making sure everything's just right before he gets up to bowl. Cook, take care. Out to four, seven. Both of these guys frequently go to the rosin bag. Boise is a little bit different type. I mean, there's all different styles. He goes back to the rosin bag again. He wants this. He's, I said he's a fidgety bowler. He wants everything to be right on this he shot. He has a superstitious towel, too. I don't know if anybody paid special attention to that. We haven't had it in the shop much, but uh, he has a towel. It just has to be folded and sit at just the right way in his matches. Ninth frame. Light again and gets it this time. Well, Jim, if you noticed in that World Series when they had it on last week, when those managers would go out to the mound, they would always avoid stepping on those white lines going out there. So superstition seems to run among all sports people. There's the towel that he's going to. I'm going to wipe his half it off a little bit. He sets it back down. It's at the exact same spot. And a spare and seven pins here will make him a winner. And he knows it. The best kind of mark is a strike. He's up by 14, and he's on a strike. He's in the 10th frame. Right there. there. Beautiful shot. Boise Huber has done it. Boise's going to get a chance to get his first title here. And the guy that he's going against will be looking for his 26th title and second in a row. And that gentleman is Mark Roth.
There's a shot by Hubert. Looking for three. He has found the groove. Some people could say save those for the back swings, but he is trying to find his line that will carry it through because he will not have a chance to practice. And Mark Roth will on these lanes before the title match. So three strikes in a row, which is one more than his total through eight frames. And this one will give him a 206. So he finishes up. He goes Brooklyn, does not. So he's done with it. And Boise Uber will have the championship. However, it is none other than Mark Roth that is the obstacle. Roth defeated Huber 235-194 earlier in the week. Biggest game of Boise's career right here. Starts off a little tight. Leaves only the 4-7. Started off the same kind of position in the previous match. Left at the 3-6. Left the 3-10 in the match before that. Struck to open the match against Earl Anthony. He's already beaten Anthony, Neil Burton, and Steve Cook. And this match means so much to Boise. It means qualifying for the Firestone. It means the honor of a PBA title. And I should say at the outset that, that uh, Mark Roth is having trouble with the approach on the right lane. The approach and practice for him was slippery, and it still is. This is the lane that he is shooting at right now. So a strike here would give him the Good deal of confidence, and there it is. And he trips that four pin right out of there. Mark. He had a 266 earlier in the week on this pair, his highest game of the week. Now watch the loft. Way out on that lane, over the dots, which are five to six feet out there. In tight, two pin goes to the wall and nudges the four out there. And not take only, a quick lead here with a double. Not only the 266, but he's also averaged 240, and he runs it by the 10 pin. Mark Roth is the type of player that really likes to come out quick. You get out of the gate fast and get ahead and make you catch him. And that's all a 10. Just said, nope, we're going to make it a little closer for a while. He has won this tournament in 1976 and in 1979. He was second in 78, fourth in 75, fifth in 77, seventh in 1980, and it continues right on down. In 1974, he had his, his worst year here and finished 13th. You would say he likes Westgate Lanes, huh? <laughs> of course, he was the champion last week in Lansing. This tournament will put him over $100,000 for the fifth straight year. No matter what happens, whether he That's wins right. or loses. That's right. This tournament will put Boise Huber over the $20,000 category. A little light, and he gets the wall shot. That's the tickler, the old hit him thin and watch him spin shot. We get a look at Boise Huber's timing here. The backswing's short, straight through a little turn at the end. And the ball sliding by just nicks that head pin and tickles him down. <laughs> So Huber goes spare strike. Roth strikes spare. The match is even. Boise can take the lead with a strike. Boise's ball is right in time, though. And he trips the four out there, a la Mark Roth. Takes a 10-pin lead. Mark Roth qualified 13th, then went up to lead after the first match play block by 11, after the second match play block by 75. He's had 500 bonus pin, 540 bonus pin. This week. Oh, man. 10 pin. And he almost, a crossover shot like that, and left the solid 10. It would have been a break to strike, but it was almost a bad break because it was such a solid Brooklyn that it sure could have struck. Looking for his second spare in a row, whereas Boise Huber has two strikes in succession. Hard and straight right in that 10 pin. So through three, Mark Roth has a 39 spare. Huber with a 20 in the first frame on two strikes, so he enjoys the advantage. Roth trying to win successive PBA titles for the fourth time in his career. Career TV record, however, not too good, 38 and 52, but a good average of 2.128. We explained that last week that he had just a total horrendous start in his career like one and eight one and nine on tv brooklyn again and this time gets it with a head pin hitting the five nine <laughs> you don't see that too often but we saw it here and mark roth gets the strike I remember the last time i saw mark roth go back to back shots on the brooklyn boise huber looking for three bagger 
Can take a 21 pin lead with a strike here, and it's light. Out the window, leaves the washout. That's just what he didn't want to happen. See, that's that's giving it right back to him. The chance you, you have your opportunity to put him away, and you give it back to him. The controlled swing here. Watch the follow through. Follow through didn't look bad. He just must not have got any lift on the ball because it's sure not biting. And of course, he has terrible count with just six. He was on a double, so that will count against him. And now he needs to spare it off. He's given it a shot. Oh, just by the head pin. He thought he had a chance at it. And he's given Mark Roth the lead sitting on the bench. The Boise Huber is open in the fourth with a washout. He is sitting on a 72, whereas Roth is on a 59 strike. And he went from 11 pins ahead with a chance to go up by 21 to being down seven. Boise now tries to bounce back. He's in the fifth frame and leads the 10 pin. The weak 10. We've seen that several times today. He needs to regroup, make the spare. Right now, Mark Roth is certainly uh, not pounding that pocket. So uh, he's not out of this match by any manner of means. That is, Boise isn't. Shakes his head. He's got to keep his concentration on. You have to forget those bad shots. Put them out of your mind and go on to the next one. Takes care of the 10 pin in pretty good style. Mark Roth is up. Boise's mad at himself, but he's just got to forget that. This is a one-game match for a title for the, his first time. He's got to try and make every shot count. Mark is on a strike. He's spared in the third on this lane, and there's a 10 pin again. And Mark, all week long, from the deep inside angle, the ball has been holding pocket, and it's not doing that today, so you have to throw it further to the right. That's what he's done. Here's the footwork of Mark Roth, and the nice, see that long slide he has, and look at the power, that wrist cupped as it's coming through there at the bottom, that's where he gets all that power. He fires cross lane at the 10 pin once again, second time on that lane that he's had to shoot at it, so through five, Mark Roth is on top by six. And he definitely slipped shooting that spare, he almost went over the line. But right now, you know, Mark never got a double last week and he won the tournament, and he still doesn't have a double this week, and he's leading by seven pins. Yes, seven, not six. Seventy-nine spare, seventy-two spare. He went Brooklyn crossover on this lane last time. Gives this one more room. It's coming back. And he gets the wall shot. And he gave it a little more loft on that one as well. So he gets the strike in the six. He will keep at least a seven pin advantage. This is Mark Ross' style of adjustment. Throw harder, turn more, throw it further right, and loft it higher. See the backswing was even higher that time. Way out of the lane. Goes out about the 17th board. It's probably out to about the 11th or 12th here, and it comes back. It will still deflect. See it go to the right, and the pins come off that wall. And something's going to hit the 7 there. 25-year-old Boise Huber from St. Louis. Big shot of the 6th frame. Tight pocket. And that's one of the perfect shots that we saw back in the first match. And Boise's asking for a re -rack. It is still a seven pin difference as we go into the seventh frame. Mark Roth tries to be the fourth bowler this year to win back to back tournaments. Marshall Holman's won it. Earl Anthony, Tommy Baker. Tommy actually won three in a row, but he took one week off. And Boise Uber trying to win his first ever. And I think this is the most important shot of the match right here for Boise Uber. He's seven pins down, can take the lead by three pins with a double. High. He's high. Through the nose, he cut it short. In other words, the follow through jerked through at the end rather than staying with the ball. Now, watch his follow through, how quick he comes through. He just stabs at it. And the ball hooks early. He was left of his target. He didn't get a good release on the ball at all that time. The 316, he needs to make the spare, though. <laughs> Closes his eyes to that one, but he's got to get him back open because he must pick this one up. And he did. And he does. A nice so Huber stays in the match, but Mark Roth enjoys the lead. But there's a long way to go. Back in a moment. And he's seven pins ahead. We're in the seventh frame. He's on his tough lane. Can take the lead by 17 with a double. Sends it out here. Really here it comes. Hang it out light. Ten, week ten again. Ten. That is the third time in a row he has left the 10 pin on that lane, Mike. And he left the 10 pin back in the seventh, second frame. 
on the strike. So he's uh, this is the fourth one that he's shooting at, and I know he's making them all. I wasn't going to say a word. In fact, people probably don't even remember anymore that you missed four or five on one telecast. There's only three. There's only three. Jeff. Oh. Only three. <laughs> you see how quickly they forget? You sure it wasn't four or five? Well, it was four spares, but only three ten pins. Oh. That Seven pins score. still. Exactly. Four on a spare. So, of course, either one does not strike here. That and one does, that person will have the advantage. As tight as this match is, it's just going back and forth here. It can sure come down to the last shot. Mark Roth is in the eighth frame. He's high. And he gets he a great break, breaking up that split right through the heart of the pins and getting nine. Mark has left no more than one pin, but he has left one pin four times in this match. Roth had the best fourth round of the tournament, also one of the lowest first rounds, though, 1193. A 1911 difference. Won his first seven in match play. And he almost missed that start. And again, Mark now is in, his, in the eighth frame here. He has not had a double. He did not get a double last week. And yet he is still winning the match, and he won last week. Hmm. He throws straight at the spares. He changes his hand. You see, the ball's not turning over there. It's just sliding. And it almost slides right by. Just next. Steve Cook missed the six pin in the second frame of the last game, and that did him in. He was down at just a 170. Here's Boise. Eighth frame. Strike can close it to a pin. Oh, nice shot. There it is. So he is a 132. It's down to six. But if he strikes on this lane, he will tab the lead. And we get a great shot of Boise here. Short backswing. Follow through. A little to the right. The ball's still finishing, though. Watch the six pin snap that 10 out. As all... The earmarks of being a tremendous conclusion to what's been a very fine tournament. Huber can take the lead with a strike in the ninth. And he needs this to keep Mark Roth from having the potential of shutting him out. Mark is not looking. Well, now he looks at Boise. He oh, was looking at the monitor and doesn't get it. It's high. Again, he did the same thing that he did back in the seventh frame, set that ball short. He knows it. He's shaking his head. Again, he stabs at the follow-through instead of going through smooth. Turns the ball early. It hooks right now. It's high immediately. This time he's got a more difficult 310 that he must make. He has to make this. He had this 310 against Neil Burton in the opening frame and did not get it in the second match. This time, and he's got it. This time, he keeps him in the match. So he gets to spare in the ninth. We want to thank Joe Antonor, of course, for coming up. Uh, his comments, the PBA commissioner and his staff to Harry Golden, the PBA Tournament Director, and his staff, Bud Fisher, the PBA Public Relations Director, Lyle Sykes, Tour Press Director, Denny Schreiner, our Tour Broadcast Director. Ninth frame for Mark Roth. And he's high. And breaks down the 4-6. Whoa. That breaks it, makes it a four-pin match right now with one frame to go. Mark leading kind of a charm life, Mike. He certainly is. He's not bowling his best. Again, way out of the lane. Tremendous loft. The ball bounces, actually. Cuts right through the heart of the pins and what to see what hits the six. He just something just nicked it and fell over. Four and he slips difference. again. Gets the spare. the spare. He will go over and finish on the other lane. We want to thank Chuck Pisano, our TV coordinator, Tom Wilkins, the manager of Westgate Lanes, our statisticians, Larry Lobb, who finished third here last year, and Frank Ellenberg, who finished fourth here last year. You beat both those guys on your way to the title. Well, it was an ESPN week that week. Right now, what Mark needs is two strikes and eight to win his 26th PBA title. He has not put two strikes together. Really gives that one room. He comes back, his best shot of the match right there. Absolutely his best shot of the game. He must, well, he doesn't necessarily have to, but he will win it if he gets another strike in an eight. If he strikes out, he'll finish with a 206. Boise Huber can do no better than a 202. And you don't want to give your, your opponent the opportunity to win. You want to lock him out. Boise can do absolutely nothing about it as he looks on. Gives it room again. And snaps that 10 out. Two of the best shots under pressure. Mark Roth in the championship match that's, that's last week did not get two strikes together, and he didn't hear until the match was on the line. Watch the loft. Way out now. Watch the six pin, the second one from the right, and it will go to the wall and snap back that 10. He needs eight pins, and he's a winner. And he gets 10. 
206, he is a winner. Actually, he only needs seven pins. Seven pins would have made him a winner. Three strikes in a row. He has won the Columbia 300, his second tournament championship in a row. Boise Huber finishes out, and just like Gil Swiker last week, so very close, but done in by the master who has won his 26. There's so many similarities, both Wrong. sides. Have... Mark, congratulations again. I guess you'd like to come out and do this every week, wouldn't you? Oh, definitely. I'd just like to make the top five every week. We talked about the Dutchman 200 that you had, strike spare, strike spare, last week. It just seems like yesterday they were out here talking about that. You didn't have two strikes that you put together this match either until the 10th frame. Well, I was walking by. I asked uh, Harry Golden's score sheet what uh, how many, uh, the difference in the match was. And uh, I've heard him say that I might win another title without throwing a double. So uh, I got up in the 10th frame knowing if, if I don't strike, boys, you could have struck out to beat me. And I just... Try to make it, you know, two good shots and uh, one little with more speed. It's in the you like to be in the position, of course, uh, to be able to win it yourself rather than to sit back helpless like Boise did and watch you strike out. Well, I would rather get up there and just shut them out, no matter who I'm bowling, because this way you you know you feel that you really earned it instead of backing into it. And I know you like that number one position. You only have to bowl one game, and you seem to respond very well to it. Well, last two weeks I have, but before I've uh, led by three, four hundred pins and lost so. Maybe the tides are turning. Okay, let us uh, get some artillery for you here. First of all, John Rizzo, the Huber right. almost did, but then of course he had to do battle with Mark in the championship match, Mike. Mark, I want to congratulate you both for winning the title and for going over $100,000 for the fifth consecutive year. I know that you mentioned that to me last night. Was that a special goal of yours as you came out on the fall tour? Yes, it was. I was home working hard during the summer break, and uh, I wanted to come out and try and get to 100000 one more question. You're at 26 titles. Now that ties you for second place in the all-time list. You think you can catch a roll eventually? Well, if Earl retires tomorrow, and I might have a pop on him, but uh, that's going to be awfully tough. Well, I think you're going to win a lot more before you're finished. Thank you, Mike.